Hello and welcome to coverage of the Super Sunday series, Sunday Super Series here from uh, Super Renton. Sunday Series. Thank you, Randy. Super I'm Series was a different thing. <laughs> That's right. Marcia Cycliffe in the booth with Randy Bueller, and we are underway here. Matt Ferrando versus Seth Manfield in a crazy format, Randy. Yeah. This is sealed draft. And hey, it's our Manifest. first instance of Manifest here on turn two from Seth Manfield. And uh, let's see how things go. Seth is a, <laughs> he's going to take a look at his, uh, what did I his get? card. Seth's deck is black, white, splashing red. Matt Ferrando's is black, uh, white, blue, splashing black. Jeskai Barricade, no value. But it is going to block. So Jeskai Barricade enters the battlefield as an 0-4 with flash uh, and defender, but it can also return a creature you control to its owner's hand if you want. Um, He's just going to use it defensively here, though. Sandstep Outcast now for Seth Manfield is going to net him a 1-1 flyer in addition to his 2-1. And bad news for Matt Ferrando, he mm. can't hit his land drop. He's got the White Siege in hand. Oh, jeez. And he can't play it. Now, it would be pretty good here just to start throwing counters around. He can make his Jeskai Barricade a, a truly... Excellent blocker, but he's going to have to sit back and wait for now. So he's going to prevent two here and take three Citadel Siege waiting in hand. Citadel Siege, I think, is one of the best rares in the format. Wow, and Seth Manfield is going off here. Dogatar now hits the battlefield as well. Mm. And another missed land drop for Ferrando. You also note that Ferrando did nothing on that last turn sequence. He didn't have any instants to play or anything like that either. So things are uh, getting dire for Ferrando quickly. As Seth Manfield's deck is very consistent. Yeah, he's got a good curve. And quite this aggressive. Is, this is what his deck does is come out quickly, play solid attackers pretty wow. much every turn. And up this and down is the curve. Merciless Executioner adding three power to the board. And clearing the wall. And clearing away the wall. And I think we're going to see, oh, maybe not a concession here. Ferrando facing lethal, three, four, five, six, seven. If he plays the siege, he can tap down Dogatar. But instead, he has Lotus Eye Jin, which is a nice one as well. This will keep him alive for a turn. Yeah, one though, right? Yep, just one turn. He's going to fall to two after chump blocking Dogatar here. Oh, can he block there? Four, seven, nine. Oh, we must have a bad life total here because, okay. Or he's dead. He actually was just dead. All right, so that was exactly nine. And we see that the manifested card was a swamp. That was quick. That was a quick one. Uh, you know, that was a pretty much dream curve there for Seth Manfield. Yep. That's exactly what he wants to see. Yeah, and I mean, the deck that Seth has built really preys upon the opponent's mana hiccups. Yes. You hiccup at all against the guys, you know, 5-2s, 6-3s, 5-4s. Just a good, solid curve. And uh, yeah, you fall over, stumble on mana, you're just going to fall over and die to that. Maybe we can get to peek in on Yol Larson and Ken Yukihiro on the other feature match. It's interesting, Ken Yukihiro also drafted a shard. So we've got Ferrando on Esper, really blue-white with just a small splash. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yukihiro is green-white, touching red. So okay. Naya. Uh, you were ta talking about this earlier, Randy, that this might be a thing that we see more often and uh, could absolutely be the case. Yol Larson on the other side, uh, which is Ken's opponent this round, teamer. What happens when you get a Savage Knuckle Blade? Ah, the biggest of knucks. So is that Yukihiro on the left, I yep. think? Yep, that's Yukihiro, and there's uh, Yul Larson with his the big ring. It's a very European that. ring, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, Yul, Pro Tour regular for many years at this point. Ken Yukihiro, also Pro Tour regular. Definitely yeah. uh, you also got a top big match. Uh-oh, here's Warflare. Oh, jeez. Triggering a bunch of stuff. Is that <laughs> two crew shocks getting in for a billion? I, my gut says this is lethal. 
Uh, remember, if the uh, ambusher blocks, he's going to take an extra damage. We don't have life totals, but I'm going to... Yeah. yeah. Usually when your opponent does that... <laughs> you don't need the life totals. <laughs> Looks like Singing Bell Strike got kind of abused there by the War Flare. That's... I guess just another reason not to play Singing Bell Strike. Yeah, Singing Bell Strike make the cut in this format? I am surprised to see that. Seems like Yol, Yol either came up a few cards short or has a different take on this format than most people. All right, so back yeah, to our main match. Wins game one. Oh, nice little added bonus, actually. Uh, Alan Hockman, the TO, just announced that first place at this event gets to come back next year. Oh, really? Yeah. $6,000, not good enough. Wow. This is becoming the, the mini, mini world championship. <laughs> you get a seat if you win. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Trip is paid for. Invite to next year's tournament. Wow, that is great. That's a nice little added bonus. Jeez. Effective this weekend. It's just announced. Huh. Yeah, players have to be excited about that. I mean, not that they needed more reason <laughs> to try to win. Somewhere right now, great. Owen Turtenwald is lamenting his luck. <laughs> oh, and it's just like, ah, why, why couldn't it kick in last year? <laughs> yeah, Owen did win this um, tournament last year. I guarantee that's, that's exactly what's happening. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, Reed's already qualified for next year. That's right. Yeah, Reed Duke already won a qualifier. He won one of the early ones. I, you know, it, was, it wasn't that long ago. I, I actually asked him, is that for this one or next one? Yeah, that's for next one. I think he, I saw him joking that he has more wins in Super Sunday Series qualifiers than anyone else on the planet. <laughs> He's been running cold on GP day ones. Goes to a bunch of GPs. Has played a lot of Sunday Super, Super Sunday Series. Right, looks like we're just about ready to go. Yeah, here we go. Let's Tranquil Pool to kick things off for Ferrando. Yeah, maybe play See if Matt can draw a mix of land and spells. Right. His deck is almost entirely Fate Reforged cards. I keep looking at his deck list. There's only five cards from cons in his entire deck. That's crazy. I mean, we have three packs and three packs. It should, in theory, be 50 50. Here's a champion now for Matt Ferrando. This is going to reward him for having a blue permanent. I don't think he has a red one in his deck. No. All right, so the much more aggressive start for Ferrando, bashing <laughs> immediately for three damage here. And uh, he, can, he can rummage if he controls a blue or red permanent whenever this thing hits. But I think he'll... Rummage? He'll, it's not loot? No, it's rummage. Okay. It's different. Discard and then Discard draw. then draw. Yeah. All right, there's Dragon Bell Monk. That's the 2-2 two -two with Vigilance and Prowess, which is okay. It... If, if, he, if he can trigger the prowess, it's going to match up pretty nicely against what Seth has come up with. If he can't, it won't. Uh, it looks like Ferrando, though, is very much in the beatdown role here. And Seth is going to have to try to play some defense. The, uh, the spirit token, though, versus the wandering champion, that's nice. Like, that's, that's going to trade the off for that thing in most scenarios. So. I always want 3-1. Three, 3-1 one. Three, one for 2 looks like such a good rate to me. Intuitively, but there's just always these tokens floating around to block them. There are. All right, but it looks like Seth Manfield has a nice follow-up play because he's beating down right now, and uh, Matt's going to take it. So what is the follow-up here for Manfield? Looks like Merciless Executioner. He's going to sacrifice the Spirit token again, leaving himself with just the 2-1 from the Sand Step. And... Down goes the three one. Well, you mentioned yeah, that, they so traded somehow. Yeah, wandering champion didn't even get to rumble. So what is it for Ferrando? Mills himself for two. Right. Soul tie skull keeper. You know, I got to say that's not exactly the ideal play here on turn five for Ferrando. He's got a two one out of the deal couple of mills, it looks like there's a treasure cruise now in his yard, which is <laughs> kind of a bummer. Not where you want it when you're filling up your graveyard. Right, and then on top of it, uh, the monk doesn't get to attack at all here, as he doesn't want to trade it off for the sandstep outcast. So, 
things not going smoothly here for Ferrando. They're going pretty well for Manfield. He's got all of his mana barely, four swamps, but one of his dual lands is sort of filling in the rest here. Sort of. Can't cast Ride Down off of it. Correct. I think that's his only red-white card, though. Okay, 2-1 trades for 3-1, Executioner down, and Skullkeeper down. That's two damage getting in, though. Here's Dogatar. Jeez, Manfield just, mm. his deck's just so solid. He just keeps coming up with these. It's particularly nice good when it plays Dogatar every game. It will, Sans have outcasts into Dogatar. You know, yeah, yeah. It's a very tough 3 4 punch to deal with, and uh, even though it was Threw a little an bit executioner off in, here, in the middle. Ferrando attacks with his monk. No way are you blocking with Dogatar, right? No. I mean, realistically, uh, card economy-wise, it's a fine play, but Dogatar being able to attack back and or throw around counters can be a pretty big deal. If Seth has, like, great stuff to do for the rest of the game, he might consider a block, but... Because the, the, deal, the deal here is, is that Ferrando can now ostensibly can block and make the same play he was going right, to make right. before. But, but it means Matt didn't do damage. anything, right? I yes. mean, Seth is essentially saying... If you want to leave that trick up for defense, you can't cast any other any more creatures. Right, and now this gives Seth the ability to develop his board. He can attack if he wants. He can even not. Like he's got a lot of options. I wonder if Will of the Naga is a possibility here for Ferrando. He does play a couple. Wouldn't be bad. <coughs> Hooded Assassin is going to pick up a plus one, plus one counter here. Oh, funny. Is that, what's the activation cost on Dogatar? Three? Yeah, it's, it's in, in, in Seth's deck, it's one black, black. So playing that Hooded Assassin means he can get Dogatar to 5-5. Five, five. Correct. And it's got Vigilance as well, so he needs to make sure that it doesn't get tapped here. <laughs> he wasn't tapping with it last turn. No, he wasn't. Or last game. But... He's feeling extra aggressive this turn, or this game, so in it comes tapped. We'll make sure it gets undone. And uh, in the meantime, Ferrando has to try to decide how to uh, manage this situation. Is he can block the Sandstep outcast and then use whatever trick he, he had before, but he's taken a pretty big chunk of damage. And if it's only one prowess trigger, he still gives Manfield the ability to steal a counter from one of his creatures and, uh, and still right. make that trade. Right, it really feels like that hooded assassin threw off the map. Totally. Oh, Ferrando has... Uh, Plus one, plus one, plus one counter and uh, protection from any color. What feet of resistance? Oh, feet of resistance. Yeah, right. he's got feet. So that's what he was going for to try Which to trade with Dogatar. Would have killed Dogatar and now doesn't. And now doesn't. Awkward. Yeah, Ferrando really wanted to be the beat down here, and he's just not. Jeez. Wow. Lord yeah, Chief. these decks play. I mean, look at these cards. Yeah, Seth's curve is awesome. Yeah, the only the only mediocre card that he has here is that assassin, and it's done work for him too. <laughs> All right, he found a, an opportunity to throttle here. Did Matt Ferrando? So that's nice. Get Dogatar off the battlefield is a big deal, and now he's going to attack with his monk and look to try to get some value here. Manfield's at sixteen. Now that Ferrando's down to just two mana, though, Seth can really start to narrow down what the possibilities are as far as what he could have for tricks. He might just want to get that trick out of his hand. If he does, he'll probably want right. to block with the uh, Assassin and the, uh, and the Horde Chief here. Yeah, he blocks with all three. Right, he blocks with all three. 
That's fine as well. Feet is, is good it, enough, he's right? Gonna, he's going to lose a token. Yeah, it depends on what color. And it becomes well, a 4 4. So either, choosing either color will keep it alive. Well, how did both die, though? Prowess plus the plus one plus one counter. That's four power. Kills the three toughness. Oh, I see. So he, he chose the other color. Sure, that makes sense. So that leaves Seth Manfield with. Not a great scenario here, to be honest. I mean, looking at the board now, now Frando has a 3-3 three, three blocker that's good enough to block either creature. He's at 12, so, you know, there's no alpha strike possibility here. And so we're looking at a board where Frando is precariously stabilized. Now, Manfield has thrown some pretty nice curve-style haymakers, but... You know, right, the throttle on Dog Guitar was huge. It was huge. I, th this, is a, this is ostensibly the point where Manfield's deck starts to kind of hit the other side of that curve where it's not quite as good. He, he doesn't have six drops. He doesn't get to just start windmilling you know, great stuff. Now, he does have a few spells in his deck uh, that, that meet that criteria, but you know, only a couple. Mm, he's going to attack into the 3-3. Three, three. All right, he must have a trick of some sort. Ferrando... If he's got another trick in hand, may may feel inclined to take the damage. Otherwise, he's just going to have to. Seth's block capable here. of making this attack without a trick. It's a pretty reckless one. I mean, Frando. No, it's not. Matt's, you think Matt Frando's going to block? He's got a three-three prowess vigilance guy. He's tapped out. Yeah, I and mean, your if, opponent's attacking if, you with these two power guys. Yeah, if he doesn't have anything in his hand, he's going to block. Like, what is he going to do? Take four and go to eight, and then attack back for three. He doesn't win that race. He, he's forced to block if he has nothing. If he's got some prowess triggers or some way to protect his creature, then he might hang in there. Ferrando does not block. He takes it. Manfield has soul summons. Oh, oh geez. that's why. Citadel Siege. Wow. Now, this gets really interesting. Can he actually race is the question if he, if he chooses cons. If he yes. chooses the dragons and he gets to tap down one of these threats, which are all kind of the same yeah, card no, every time. Choose. So he's going to get the plus counters, one, one counters and he's going to battle for six here. He's going to Vigilance guy. He definitely choose counters. Yeah. This <laughs> is sweet. This is going to put Manfield down to 10. And the monk is, well, I was able to block either creature profitably last turn, but now it's massive. Right. And it's going to close this game out pretty quickly unless Seth has an answer. Now, if he does, that's really bad news for Matt, as I don't think Matt has another creature, though he could always draw one. The siege triggers it on your combat. <laughs> so you get it that turn as well. They really pushed this particular siege, the white one. It is far and away the best of that cycle. Gave that thing an A. Yeah. I don't usually give cards that don't do you know, like <laughs> anything an A, but that one is over the top. So Ferrando is now going, please don't draw that executioner. <laughs> And Seth Manfield has no choice but to jam with the whole squad here. Realistically, Ferrando's probably... Eat I one, just have to block four. the Manifest. I, it, that's the scariest creature. I think you've left it. Yes. If suddenly the Manifest creature turns out to have more than two power, that is... It gets bad pretty news. bad for you. And your creature's a 5-5. Five, five. Like, right. there are some things... Like, there's, there's some... Oh. That's... Did he not block? No. He, he did block it. Okay, good. I mean, it was hard to sell it, you know, hard to say. He flipped it so that he could finish it off with Dowsing Gloom. Ah. Uh, Down goes Dragon Bell Monk. All right, so this needs to be a creature. If yes, it is, it does. oh, it is. It's a Marty oh, That one was off the top, too. That yeah. never left his right he hand. He needed that. And uh, now Sonny's got a 4 5 that's going to do great on blocking duty, but it is the thinnest of margins here for Ferrando. 
And I think dowsing glue must have been what Seth had before. Sure. Back up to 13 for Seth. And he's passed the turn back mm. for Rando, hanging on. He just drew murderous cut. Oh, seriously? Yes. He can't attack this turn. I mean, <laughs> he could. <laughs> he, he would have lethal the next turn and not be facing it on the backswing thanks to murderous cut, but it's pretty risky. But he hits for six, and then he hits for eight, and then Seth dies. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you do make that attack. Interesting. I wonder if it's getting any better for Ferrando here. Yeah, know? I mean, if Seth had any, any way to finish off those last two points, he would have done it last turn. Yeah. Yeah, I think Matt could have attacked. I think maybe you battle here. Does he not huh. have black? He does have black. That is Murderous Cut, right? I've seen that card a lot. I'm pretty sure that's what he drew. And this seems very risky from Ferrando's side because if Matt draws another creature, he can just chump block once and then just kill you. He can even just not block and just kill you if he has an extra creature as well. Maybe Ferrando's trying to draw set Manfield into an all-out attack if he did draw yeah. a third creature where I he gets a two-for-one. Oh, harsh sustenance. Mm. And he's going to fire it at Matt Ferrando. This is going to backfire one way or the other. Ferrando can use Murderous Cut now, though I don't think he actually wants to. I think Manfield's going to go for the kill here. <coughs> I think he's going to say, take two, go to two, attack with both, and Ferrando gets to clear his board here. Yeah, he's going for it. This blocked a couple turns ago. Murderous Cut that. But yeah, the Murderous Cut off the top. This is a huge swing for Ferrando, who was taking lethal here. And now he's going to get to crack back for, what, 10? He's going to kill him next turn if Seth doesn't come up with something. Wow. Frando hanging on by a thread. But now he's got Seth Manfield in must-block mode. So even if this is a creature, although... All right, it's Soul Summons. <laughs> I was going to say, if Some that was Soul Tide Emissary, oh, <laughs> how geez. cool would that have been? <laughs> block leave a lethal attacker back but it wasn't so as it Still stands could be. i think he cut both of the typhoid rats so this is just probably a chump yeah oh, it was a seeker. seeker but doesn't do anything and now we have an abyss scenario as we say basically seth must block every turn until he wow. can't and that's it ferrando does find a win I do wonder. I, I, I think I attack. I think I say, let's the shut murderous the door. Cut. You yeah. have two, you, I'm at four. You have four power, but I have a murderous cut. Yeah. And I can kill you in two attacks. Yeah, and in two attacks, like, you don't block this one because you're tapped, and then the next one's lethal. And the murderous cut's so flexible in that spot where if Seth Manfield goes, let's just say he goes creature, creature, just any mm -hmm. two drops or whatever, you could find yourself in a bad spot where murderous cut actually doesn't get it done anymore. Yeah, I mean, the line that Matt chose is sort of safer in the short term. Yes. But you're giving your opponent three, four draws off the top of the right. deck. Yeah. Like, how, okay, if you're not attacking now, then we're just both top decking and we'll have to see who top decks better. Yeah. So I think I agree with you. Considering that what Seth needs in that scenario is not, it's not like, like if he draws removal, then, then the game ends. But, yep. But if he, but I mean, all he really wants is just any, any creature, basically. So. Right. Interesting spot. Yeah, it seems like Seth has a lot of draws that are good, so Matt should just you know, open himself up to one miracle top deck. Yeah. He can't expect to face too much haste, though. <laughs> yeah. He does have a particularly hasty dragon in his deck, <laughs> though. He wasn't beating that either way. Yeah, win which wins the game for Seth if he top decks it. Right. In all scenarios, so yeah. deny just, him the top decks. You just let that happen. But Matt got there. But, Matt, but Matt's line did work out, and, you know, the play that we were talking about him trying to set up where... He entices an all-out attack by Seth, mm -hmm. only to use his uh, yeah, his. The game went exactly the way Matt wanted Kind of to go. went that exact way, thanks to Seth drawing not not another creature, which is I think what what Frando envisioned, but instead harsh sustenance, which mm -hmm. got him in for two damage immediately and tempted Seth to just go for the win right away. Which I don't blame Seth. I think if I'm no, Seth, it's a really I think if my spot opponent analyze, had actually. removal, he would be attacking me and right, you know right, right. like you know he doesn't have removal. Yeah, but he did. Because Frando got a little tricky. So this is, uh, this is Sealed Draft. Yep. At the Super Sunday Series. And, uh, and it's a very different format. Uh, the decks end up being insane. Uh, they get 
basically a mini sealed pool of three packs that they get to browse over for a few minutes before continuing to the draft portion where they fill out the rest of the deck by drafting three more packs like a more conventional uh, booster draft and then they combine those to make one deck and uh, you know 140 card deck I mean, we're talking yeah, these decks are strong the, yeah. these are these are very very strong decks makes for good viewing for us too yeah, I, I feel mean, like Seth's deck is stronger than I thought it was when I was watching him draft mm. it because it doesn't have synergy and no. the the top end sort of bomb rare quotient is I mean it's good mm -hmm. but it's the kind of thing you can pull off in a normal draft mm. but yeah, totally What's, what was harder, I think, to appreciate while we watched him draft it is just how good the curve is. It's just so consistent, yeah. Yeah, it's like half a step toward constructed in terms of how consistently he can come yes. out of the gates. Yeah, He's going I, to play an awesome two drop. He's going to play an awesome two well, drop. Well, see, that's the thing. The only weak spot, I think, for him are those Sultai emissaries, which he may have some other synergies with, but if that's his two drop, then his curve doesn't look quite as good. All right. You know, he's got two of them. Yeah. Um, but the rest looks fantastic. Yeah, the soul summons are totally solid. So far, though, we have seen him both times mm -hmm. curve Sandstep Outcast into Dogatar the Adamant. So yes. we, we have to make sure that we temper that because Sandstep Outcast is one of the best one. cards that we're going to see out of the, the new format, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for, for limited. That, that's going to be an early pick uh, mm -hmm. often. You're saying if your limited deck can play die guitar every game, it's going to look pretty good? That's your theory? I am saying that, but I'm also saying that about Sandstep Outcast, okay. which I, I really do feel is, is one of the premium commons in the set. So Three mana for a 2-1 and a 1-1? One, one? Flying. Yeah. yeah. A warrior and a spirit yeah, token. I mean, that's, that's legit. Do our other feature match end, or...? Uh, just drawn hands. Oh, they're just drawn hands? All right. Oh, they're also going to game three. That makes sense. Do you think this format gets faster or slower with Fate Reforged? Faster. That's what yeah, I, think too. I, I don't think it gets a lot faster though because there's still the prevalence of cons, especially in draft. But uh, it, like, the blue cards are quite fast, the white cards stay fast, and I think we're going to see a mild step up in speed. There's that sand step outcast again. Mm -hmm. uh, this card is going to do so much work over the course of this format. It fits right in. And not exactly what Larson wanted to see. I think he's got Disdainful Stroke in his hand. Mm. Ugh. And there's that Singing Bell Strike. Ken is going to want to try to play around it if he's seen it. If he hasn't, can't really blame him for not, but that's going to get Disdainful Stroke. Where's Big <laughs> Yeah, even Surveyor, that works. Bounce he gets to token. use it to just kill a token and then probably just trade on the ground with, uh, with one of these creatures eventually. Ooh, hey. awkward. <laughs> Alabaster Kieran pretty, lines up pretty well against the Surveyor. It does, although I did see that uh, he just drew a Teamer Charm, so huh. he could take care of that problem right now if he wanted. Now he's actually got a few ways to deal with that. He's got um, he's got a combat trick as well, which is I think why you see him attacking here. He's got dragon scale boon in hand. It's got to be super scary for Ken to block here. You know, I, I wonder if Larson two, two just fire fires it off. Two two flyer attacking into an alabaster Kieran. You yeah. can't block here. Can you, you can't block. But I, I you know, the one play that I, I haven't, I, I've seen not as often as I think you should, is just firing it off right there. Like Ken goes, no blocks, you go fine. Take two extra. Take two extra and I have a 4-4 four, four back on blocks, right? Like deal with that. Yeah, I think it comes down to whether you have other plays with your mana. Totally. I agree, people don't just make their creatures big often enough. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you just look at the board and you're like, well now you've got a 4-4 four, four flying blocker and I just took four damage, like that's not good. And it's risk-free because Ken was tapped out. Mm -hmm. In this case, though, he wanted to play that Rider, so that, that's why he didn't make that play. But Arc Lightning is still a good card. 
correct. Yeah, good old-fashioned morph there for Yul Larson. Trying to pick up round one here from uh, Ken Yukihiro. Twenty-first ranked Ken Yukihiro. He's not platinum, but he's on pace to be platinum this, he is. this season. Well, you figure there's about twenty-five platinum players by the end of the year. So mm -hmm. if you're ranked, you're on track to be platinum. Oh, sure. All right, let's flash back over here to the, uh, to the main match where we have Seth Manfield versus Matt Ferrando. And it looks like a little bit of a mulligan here for Seth. Something that I don't anticipate him having to do too much. It's pretty firmly in two colors and uh, and like we said before, he's got a really solid mana curve, which, you know, it, it does let you get away with not mulliganing quite as much as normal, but you still have to sometimes, of course. See if there's a better six waiting for Seth here. I think I saw a Kolagon there. <laughs> and there's a mountain. Not the ideal land to start things off, mm -mm. but I guess when you've got Only your got splash rare in hand, it's not too bad. Scar Barons for Ferrando. So colors look to be covered for both players currently, as Matt has all three of his on turn two. He's going to play 2-1 and pass a turn. Wow. Oh, the saddest Crater's Claws in the history of known man. That sucks. Manfield stuck on lands, stuck on colors. It's a smart play, though. It is. Like, you, you do what you got to do. I mean, he's probably saved himself six or eight damage by doing He has that. no third land. He has no other play. Yeah. You have to, yeah, sometimes you just have to Crater's Claws the two one for, for one. That's right. Lotus Path Jin cracks in. It's a flyer. And here's some more heat with Wandering Champion from Matt Ferrando looking to try to close this game out as quickly as possible while, while Seth struggles with finding his mana. Done a pretty good job of drawing though here. After doing not a whole lot, he's got a manifest plus a seeker of the way now. So, you know, hopefully sh shoring up the ground game a little bit here. Meanwhile, Ferrando has not missed a land drop. He's at six now to Seth's two. And again, he just wants to shut the door here. He's trying to find the way to just slam it on Seth. Because he knows that if Seth finds hmm. mana, that was a harsh sustenance to kill Seeker of the Way and gain a couple of life for Matt. Also trigger that uh, Lowe's Path Jim. Does he offer the trade on the ground? Oh, it's not. Uh, it is still actually a trade, isn't it? <laughs> That's awkward. He's got a uh, feat of resistance in hand, but the manifest hmm. creature is colorless, so you can't get it. Hard to know what protection. color to choose. Yeah hard bordering on impossible. Because I think he'd love to just fire mm -hmm. that wandering champion through it, but he's going to use murderous oh, cut. Again, the most aggressive path. line possible. I think this is great for Matt. Yeah, your opponent's on two lands. Yes. You clear a path for your 3-1 and just bash him. And he also gets to trigger the ability. To Ooh. What did he draw? Well, I think he drew first. Uh, so he's got to be... He's got to be really careful there because I'm pretty sure it's the opposite. I'm going to double check. If you do, you may discard a card. Yeah, so he, we need to make sure that that doesn't happen again because he, he drew first and then discarded. He looted, which is very, very, very different. Yeah. And he's got to be super careful about that. Now he's treasure cruising. This game's not going to last much further, but it looks like they, they just sort of went by that here. But there should have been actually a judge call from Seth on that. 
He's, he, he did he's it again. doing it again. Yeah, it's not that good of a card. It's quite good, but in a scenario like this, it's virtually the same thing, but I think he might have gotten away with one there. Yep. It doesn't look like it's going to matter, but you see Matt double-checking his card here. This can happen. It's a tough spot, right? I mean, we're dealing with brand new cards.